F-35 Joint Strike Fighter is well known, but its less attractive sibling remains quite mysterious, maybe because it couldn't succeed. Still, it existed at a particular time, and that is why we are going to discuss it today. Let's see the Boeing F-32, which once upon a time was thought to be the way forward for the USAF. The Boeing F-32, Boeing's participation in the JSF program, was an attempt to secure the largest military contract in American aviation history. But before we see how it did all turn out for the company, the history of the Boeing X-32 fighter jet is a great way to get off to a soaring start. With the dawn of a new era came the Joint Strike Fighter, or just JSF for short. It acted as a follow-up to the Advanced Tactical Fighter, or ATF, program, which ultimately led to the development of the F-22. Since the A-12 adventure and the NAFT programs were canceled, the JSF concept was to develop a new multi-purpose fighter for both the Navy and the Air Force. The A-10, F-16, F-A-18, AV-8 Harrier, and the F-117 were all slated to be retired in favor of this new JSF plane. Among the typical suspects in this extremely audacious attempt to create the final fighter jet the United States would ever require, the big four aircraft manufacturers, Lockheed, Boeing, Northrop, and McDonnell Douglas, submitted an application. In the end, the Joint Strike Fighter program decided to accept entries from two different businesses, Boeing and Lockheed Martin. These companies were awarded the $750 million contract as they agreed to demonstrate their competing designs during the program's concept demonstration phase. Both were tasked with the responsibility of building and flight testing two aircraft between the years 1997 and 2001. These aircraft were mandated to demonstrate capabilities for three distinct variants, conventional takeoff and landing, short takeoff and vertical landing, and carrier takeoff and landing. As a side note, it's worth noting that in order to limit production costs and make sure the companies don't go bankrupt trying, the government actually forbade them from funding the further development of the prototypes. Keeping in view the contract, Lockheed developed the X-35 and Boeing created the X-32. And while the latter was a fast jet with an intriguing design philosophy, Boeing took the mandate very differently. The strategy that Boeing implemented in order to gain a competitive edge was to deliver much cheaper production and life cycle costs by reducing the amount of variation that existed between the many JSF variants. As a result, the X-32 is developed with a sizable delta wing that is made of carbon fiber composite in one piece. Being devoid of any folding mechanism, the wing had a span of 9.15 meters a leading edge sweep of 55 degrees, and the capacity to hold up to 20,000 pounds or 9,000 kilograms of fuel. The high sweep angle served two purposes. It allowed for a thick wing section to be employed while still giving a minimal amount of transonic aerodynamic drag, and it provided a good angle for conformal antenna equipment that was put on the wing. Both of these purposes were accomplished. In the end, the X-32's wings were only slightly larger than the Hornet's with its wings folded. A thrust vectoring nozzle was used in place of the lift fan like the one on an X-35 for its short takeoff and vertical landing variant. This design followed the same principles as the Harrier jump jet, but the lift fan and foldable nozzle that the X-35 and F-35 use now were more difficult to implement back then. However, once implemented, it proved to be very beneficial. Given that the X-32 lacked a lift fan, it acquired a sizable amount of air intake at its front for hovering. It was a problem for the aircraft's stilt performance as the opening smile would leave the compressor blades exposed. The solution to this was what Russian Su-57 incorporated, radar wave blockers. These blockers in the intake would have counteracted this issue, but sadly, such technology wasn't available back then. The engine, unlike the X-35 and pretty much every other fighter, was mounted slightly forward. This shifted the center of gravity, and the bulky and weird design was the only solution to keep the aircraft stable during hovering and flight. There is no obvious benefit to the design except space. A maximum of six AMRAAM missiles, or a mixture of AMRAAMs and sidewinders, may be stored in the jet's armaments bay. Despite its odd appearance, the concept made sense. It would be far less expensive and easier to maintain than the X-35, yet it could have significantly greater firepower. Meanwhile, the design teams were trying to figure out how they could possibly lose. The issue at hand was the moniker. As the name suggests, the Joint Strike Fighter program was an effort by the Navy and the Air Force to acquire modern fighter planes. 
they each determined their own standards for the new plane. The Navy revised its requirements eight months into the project, prompting the discussion of X-32 design trade-offs. The engineers' work was undone when it became clear that the Delta Wing, with its relatively short span, couldn't meet the Navy's objectives. In response, Boeing offered a new tail design and the addition of horizontal stabilizers for the X-32B, the VTOL variant. However, there wasn't enough time to really execute these changes. In 1999, both X-32A and B debuted. However, the successful maiden voyage of the X-32A was in 2000. Pratt & Whitney YF-119 engines propelled both these planes. This is the same motor that drives the YF-22 and the YF-23 as well. The Navy commissioned this style VTOL variant's first flight was postponed until 2001. Although its flight performance was adequate, with even the Chase F-18 Hornet not being able to keep up with the jet, the X-35 ultimately proved to be superior. The F-32 had an overheating issue due to its intake sucking in hot air from the front rather than cold air from above. This posed problems during hovering and landing. Ultimately, the Boeing X-32 lost the race to the X-35, despite the fact that both aircraft well exceeded the program's expectations. Nonetheless, some will insist that it was fine in every way. Legend has it that the X-32's design made it look more like a toy than a legitimate combat plane. According to the chief test pilot, Phil Yates, if the production model had been improved to meet the government's other needs, it could have been a greater fighter plane for the United States and its allies. While Lockheed's prototype was remarkably close to the final product, the company's lasting contribution to aviation history, at least in the eyes of Boeing, lies in the technological advances made during the aircraft's construction. These were ultimately put to use in Boeing's successful bid for a contract to supply the Super Hornet to the Navy. This brings us to the end of this video. If you like the video, please consider subscribing and sharing so we can keep bringing you more content like this. Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you next time.